When you die, you do not stop creating. Now, the reason you do not stop creating when you die is that you don't ever die. You are life itself, and life cannot not be life. Therefore, you cannot die. So, at the moment of your death, what happens is you go on living. In a very short time, the soul learns that it can be anywhere with the speed of its thought. A feeling of incredible freedom and lightness overtakes the soul. And it usually takes a while for the enemy to get used to all this bouncing around with every thought. If the person had children and should think of these children, immediately the soul is in the presence of those children, wherever they are. Thus the soul learns that not only can it be wherever it wants with the speed of its thought, it can be in two places at once, or three, or five. It can exist, observe, conduct activities in these places simultaneously, without difficulty or confusion. And then it can rejoin itself, returning to one place again, simply by refocusing. The soul remembers in the next life what it had been well to remember in this life that all effect is created by thought and that manifestation is a result of intention. What I focus on as my intention becomes my reality. The only difference is the speed with which you experience the result. In the physical life, there might be a lapse between the thought and the experience. Newly departed souls therefore learn to monitor their thoughts very carefully because whatever they think, they experience. If physicalized souls learn to control their thoughts as quickly and as efficiently as spiritualized souls, their whole lives would change. So, in the creation of individual reality, thought control, or what some might call prayer, is the highest form. Therefore, think only on good thoughts and righteous things. Dwell not in negativity and darkness, and even in moments when things look bleak, especially in those moments. See only perfection. Express only gratefulness. And then imagine what manifestation of perfection you choose next. In this formula is found tranquility. In this process is found peace. In this awareness is found joy. As you begin to remember that you are at cause in the creation of your experience, not at the effect of it, life is a single occurrence, an event in the cosmos that is happening right now. All of it is happening everywhere. There is no time but now. There is no place but here. Here and now is all there is. Yet you choose to experience the magnificent of here and now in its every detail. And to experience your divine self as the here and now creator of that reality, there are only two ways, two fields of experience in which you could do that. Time and space. So magnificent was this thought that you literally exploded with delight. In that explosion of delight was created space between the parts of you. And the time it took 
to move from one part of yourself to another. In this way, you literally tore yourself apart so that you could look at the pieces of you. So I am giving you tools. And with these tools, you can change your life. Everything that occurs, everything that has occurred, is occurring and ever will occur, is the outward manifestation of your innermost thoughts, choices, ideas, and determinations regarding who you are and who you choose to be. So condemn not, therefore, those aspects of life with which you disagree. Seek instead to change them and the conditions that made them possible. Behold the darkness, yet curse it not. Rather be a light unto the darkness, and so transform it. Let your light so shine before men that those who stand in the darkness will be illumined by the light of your being, and you will see at last who you really are. Be a bringer of the light, for the light can do more than illuminate your own path. Your light can truly be the light that lights the world. So shine on then. O oh, Illuminati, shine on. That the moment of your greatest darkness may yet become your grandest gift. And even as you are gifted, so too will you gift others and give to them the unspeakable treasure themselves. Let this be your task. Let this be your greatest joy to give people back to themselves, even in their darkest hour, especially in that hour. The world waits for you. Heal it now. In the place where you are, there is much you can do for my sheep are lost and must now be found. Be you, therefore, as good shepherds and lead them back to me. God seeks to prove itself to no one. For God has no need to do that. God is. And that is what is so. Those who know themselves to be one with God or have the experience of God within have no need, nor do they seek to prove that to anyone, least of all themselves. And so it was that when they taunted him, saying, if you are the Son of God, come down from that cross, the man called Jesus did nothing. Yet three days later, quietly and unobtrusively, when there were no witnesses and no crowds and no one to whom to prove anything, he did something a great deal more astonishing. And the world has been talking about it ever since. And in this miracle is found your salvation. For you have been shown the truth, not only of Jesus, but of who you are. And you may be saved from the lie about yourself, which you have been told, which you have accepted as your truth. God invites you always to your highest thought about yourself. There are those on your planet now who have manifested many of these higher thoughts, including causing physical objects to appear and disappear, making themselves appear and disappear, even living forever in the body, or coming back to the body and living again. And all of this, all of this, 
has been made possible because of their faith, because of their knowing, because of their immutable clarity about how things are and how they are meant to be. And while in the past, whenever people in earthly form have done these things, you have called the events miracles and have made the people saints and saviors. Yet they are no more saints and saviors than you, for you are all saints and saviors. Which is the very message they have been bringing you. So I say to you again, whatever you choose for yourself, give to another. What you say is, I see you. And what you can see in another, you can begin to see in yourself. It is outward evidence of your inner reality. It is outward proof of your inner truth, the truth of your being. And so I send you new teachers, more teachers, all with the same message as the teachers of old. This is their message, that God stays hidden from no one, but speaks to everyone even the least worthy among us. For if God will speak to me, God will speak directly to the heart of every man, woman, and child who seeks the truth. There is thus hope for all of us. None of us is so horrible that God would forsake him, nor so unforgivable that God would turn away. Yet I tell you this, you are worthy. You have based your sense of worthiness on the past. Well, I base your sense of worthiness in the future. The future. Yes, the future. Always the future. This is where your life is, not in the past, but the future. That is where your truth is, not in the past. What you have done is unimportant compared to what you are about to do. How you have erred is insignificant compared to how you are about to create. In truth, I do not forgive you and will not forgive you ever for anything. I do not have to. There is nothing to forgive. But I can release you and I do now, once again. As I have done so often in the past through the teachings of so many teachers. So you understand the logic behind the truth that I do not condemn, nor shall I punish, nor have I a need to seek retribution. I have no such need, for I have not been and cannot be offended or damaged in any way. The same is true of you and all others. Stick to your beliefs if that serves you. Hold tight. Do not waver. For your ideas about right and wrong are your definitions of who you are. Yet, do not require that others define themselves according to your terms. And do not stay so stuck in your present beliefs and customs that you halt the presence of evolution itself. For life goes on within you and without you. Nothing stays the same. Nor can anything remain unchanged. To be unchanged is to not move. And to not move is to die. Which is impossible. All life is in motion. And all life is eternal. Even rocks are filled with motion. Everything moves. Everything. Therefore, by the very fact of motion, nothing is the same from one moment to the next. Nothing. Remaining the same or seeking to moves against the laws of life, and this is foolish. So change. Yes, Change. 
Change your ideas of right and wrong. Change your notions of this and that. Change your structures, your constructions, your models, your theories. Allow your deepest truths to be altered. Alter them yourself for goodness' sake. Because your new idea of who you are is where the growth is. Your new idea of what is so is where evolution accelerates. Your new idea of the who, what, where, when, how, and why of it is where the mystery gets solved. The plot unravels. The story ends. Then you can begin a new story. A grander one. Your new idea about all of it is where the excitement is. Where the creation is. Where the God in you is made manifest and becomes fully realized.